Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Community Matters, and we're talking to Russell, Russell Hanma, who comes in and reports on events that affect the state of Hawaii, sometimes internationally, in this case, locally. Uh, so while we have coronavirus, while we have the, uh, the decline of our democracy in Washington, while we have climate change, we also have Mauna Kea. And Russell's here to discuss that. He's been involved with Mauna Kea for a long time, um, and he's been part of a, a group that has tried to resolve the problem. Uh, Russell, welcome to the show. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jay, uh, for inviting me today. I know it's a very important subject uh, as well with the Mauna Kea Mountain being a sacred mountain, as well with the TMT pod, uh, telescope, which is uh, $1.4 billion, known as the world's largest telescope. And uh, as you know, uh, there has been a lot of protests, uh, and it took like 10 years for the TMT partners to uh, come up with a uh, viable uh, building permit what the Supreme Court has uh, gave them a green light to approve. So they have all the building construction plans to proceed. But however, last year in July, when they were gonna have the construction crew going up to the access road to Mauna Kea, there was a protest with native Hawaiians and they blocked the road. And roughly there was like 2000 uh, native Hawaiians over there uh, protesting the secret mountain so they couldn't have the access to go into the road. So from that, you know, we're on this dead bolt right now on the limbo stage with the Mauna Kea Mountain and the TMT telescope project. So I have some few plans that I've been working on in the past. Uh, we had our official from UNESCO uh, come over here. And UNESCO is the them. United Nations. You, you yes, had somebody United from the United Nations. Nations come out here on Mauna Kea? Yes, uh, we had the United Nations. Uh, matter of fact, Arina Bokova, who was the executive secretary uh, general for UNESCO, she came here about three years ago when we hosted an international uh, conservation for uh, climate change conference. And uh, she gave a presentation. I was able to have, sit down and talk to her. And I mentioned about Mauna Kea Mountain and TMT telescope can be uh, registered and listed as a UNESCO's World Culture Heritage Site, where the Native Hawaiians have studied from the past, present to the future. So what happened was about a month after that, uh, the UNESCO officials came and evaluated, uh, wanted to conduct a meeting. So I set up a meeting with, uh, Monic uh, with the Pisces, the Pacific International Space Exploration System, and uh, we were going over some of the issues uh, that can affect uh, the Mauna Kea Mountain, as well with the TMT and the space program that we're trying to push there. So what happened was they did evaluate it and they came up with a vital preliminary report saying that uh, they can classify Mauna Kea as windows of the universe, where the native Hawaiians have uh, studied the glazed stars from the past, present, and the future. As you know, Mauna Kea Mountain was a black, was a white cap mountain. It was a beacon of light. They used that as a as a guidelines for uh, like a. Uh, well, a let me a let me get it straight. Thing. Windows Windows on the universe is is really as astronomy of of sorts. Uh, you're looking at the stars. You also mentioned that um, the effort, at least as seen by UNESCO, was that uh, or at least by somebody was uh, that it would be part of the space program. Um, both of those are like scientific things. Is there room? Is there room for either of those, either the space program or looking at the stars on the top of a sacred mountain, on the top of the mountain that, uh, you know, has so much controversy about, about astronomy and the telescope? Oh, yes. Uh, we have our presence there with the uh, Pacific International Space Exploration System. Uh, it's a, a division under the uh, DBED, Department of Economic Development and Tourism, which we're pushing for the space uh, industry with aerospace. And uh, that was initiated, I would say, five or six years ago. That uh, so they've been doing a lot of these uh, work projects uh, relating to the Mars mission with the rover robotics, uh, getting out of major universities internationally. And, well, don't the and Native Hawaiians uh, object to that? I mean, they're objecting to astronomy as a violation of the sacred characteristic of the mountain. Wouldn't they object to other science as well? Oh, this didn't happen before when we were pushing for the uh, the Pisces program. But what and about when, now? Uh, Mauna, with the Mauna Kea, uh, I guess right now they're more focused on the, the Hawaiian protesters are focused on the 
the TMT telescope yeah. project. And uh, they haven't mentioned anything about the Pisces because we do have our, uh, the UH has a, a, a laboratory like, like a six month incubator so that it would make kind of meets the requirement for you know testing the grounds for the how the human conditions might apply in space like if you have lunar moon base camp there or even a mars mission when you're in the terrain of the mars so, so mars going back to the going the back to the united space. nations for a moment russell uh so the unesco was interested in designating mauna kea as a window on the universe um is that a cultural thing or is that a scientific thing and if it's a, it's not a cultural thing, how do the Native Hawaiian, how do they feel about it? Uh, it is a cultural thing as well with the uh, uh, scientific uh, reasons that UNESCO exists. And they're into uh, preserving the cultural heritage and, uh, and move on with the other means. In this case, in Hawaii, we can move on with astronomy because they've been studying and glazing the stars for our answers the hawaiian answers been there in the past so i know so, that so when you say you a, a window on the universe um is that the designation for the cultural characterization or is there another term that unesco is is is, is looking at to characterize uh, mauna kea as a sacred mountain culturally well, I did get a, a preliminary report, and it did mention that uh, it's the windows of the universe that they want to apply with uh, Native Hawaiians uh, looking at the stars and glazing it from the past, present, and future. Okay. And which, and, uh, which is a good sign. I think what we want to do is that we want the Native Hawaiians uh, who are protesting uh, to realize what the future is and see if we can coexist and work together for the future from the past, present, and future. And we do respect the uh, Hawaiian culture and their uh, their existence and what have, what they have done in the past. Practicing Who, who's we, culture. Russell? You're in an organization that is involved in trying to determine a solution uh, to develop state policy on this. What is that organization and how does it relate to the task force, which is uh, ostensibly going to be created by the 2020 state legislature? Yeah, there is a task force that the state is pushing right now. I know there's a House and concurrent resolution that uh, uh, both the House and the Senate agreed to issue, which is asking the governor, uh, uh, Ige, to come up with a Blue Ribbon Commission to study the Native Hawaiians' involvement in the past, present, and future of their existence. So uh, I think this might come in hand to hand, and they might be want to focus in that with the Mauna Kea uh, mountain situation right now. Because as you know, uh, Mayor Harry Kim of Big Island uh, had a moratorium, which he told uh, elders at the Mauna Kea summit, if they can uh, open up the, uh, the access road to go up. So in other words, they don't have, have to block the roads. And this two month moratorium was uh, signed, was a verbal agreement with the native Hawaiians, with the Mayor Harry Kim, which was on December 26th. So in other words, in February, end of this month, the two month moratorium of stopping the construction is going to be over. So now they might be entitled to move the construction people to go up there, the tractors and all the equipment to uh, facilitate the uh, TMT uh, construction going on. So the task force, uh, uh, who's on the task force and what is the task force doing uh, in order to avoid a, a confrontation on and after February 26th? I'm not exactly sure who's going to be on the task force, but I'm just assuming probably most likely will be the Hawaiian leaders, uh, uh, hopefully with the UH. Uh, so they haven't decided who's going to be on the task force yet because this is a resolution that they just came out and there's going to have to be a public hearing on that. I'm oh, supposed. but is there a group though? Forward. Is there a group trying to meet uh, a group that would, you know, try to uh, make make some kind of resolution of this at least temporarily to to take place after february 26th yeah i think so uh, when i talked to some of the people at the hawaii county the planning department research under the hawaii county uh they've been working on some of these you know working out with the the natives there because it is a big island uh, hawaii county issue and i know the governor wants to work with mayor harry kim and make sure he can uh, push forward and move on so hopefully with the Hawaiian leaders, and I brought this up because I did get a recognition 
memorandum from uh, UNESCO officials saying that they realized the situation there about three weeks ago. And I did send that memorandum uh, to Governor, former Governor John Wahe and uh, Dante Carpenter, who was a mayor of Big Island. He's a mm -hmm. native Hawaiian there. Mm -hmm. And uh, William Ayla, uh, he's one of the Hawaiian leaders. So they can all come up with some kind of uh, ramification, some kind of uh, measure to uh, mitigate this and see if we can move forward. In, they've been uh, meeting, in a, they've been meeting now, yeah? Yes. So uh, you had a letter that you wanted to show that uh, representing the status of the matter. Uh, can we see that letter and you can talk about it? Yeah, I guess that uh, letter that uh, the mayor wrote to the Mauna Kea, regarding the Mauna Kea access road to the leaders over there, the Hawaiian leaders saying that, you know, the GMT got open the saddle road. So in terms of public safety, so this was uh, dated, what, December 23rd, 2019, last uh, week. And I know there's a management plan. Uh, the Mauna Kea management plan came after that. So I, I know I did, you might want to show that on the screen too. Yeah, okay. So it's 30 this is 30 meter telescope management plan. And what can you, we'll yeah, have about the executive summary. Long. Why don't you describe what that, what that provides? I think it usually has, it's like an 80 page, uh, 85 page. Uh, it talks mostly like, you know, the rental agreement, uh, like they got to pay like uh, 30, thousand dollars of rent to the Mauna Kea. Uh, Did you say 30 or 300,000? Yeah, 300,000. Yeah. And roughly the, the lease of the pay of $1.8 million should go into the native Hawaiian culture needs for 10 years. Another uh, additional STEM education for TMT International Think Tank, they got to uh, pay about $1 million to uh, to educate the native Hawaiian who are interested in going to the astronomy field. And also that this is a big thing. The UH is considering having a Hale Hohaku, a visitor center to honor, to celebrate the Hawaiian history, language and culture along the modern science and astronomy. So in other words, they're gonna have a cultural center in there at the facility, at the site, at the TMT or Mauna Kea. So native Hawaiians can still practice their cultural heritage rituals that they have and uh do See, I, I wonder how you, how you oh, can do no. that this is at twelve thousand feet um <clears throat> and that means everybody has to take a car up to the top of the mountain i can see practical problems involved with that i mean there are for example there are medical problems you can have um, you know pulmonary edema at that uh, at that uh, mm -hmm. altitude i don't know how they're going to handle mm -hmm. that it's not like every Tom, Dick, and Harry can take the trip up to the top. Right, right. I guess they got to justify the ideal location. It might be on the summit, below the summit where the access road might be, yeah. where they're processing right now. So who wrote or this? Is this from the university? I think it was a joint effort with the university uh, as well with the state and the Hawaii County, and uh, they came up with this management plan. So what, I, what I got be... here is, uh, you tell me if I'm missing something. One is um, they get to pay... Somebody gets to pay. I'm not sure if that's the state, you know, out of the general fund or something else. You get to pay the Native Hawaiian people who are objecting. Um, and, um, and then uh, there's also this uh, cultural center somewhere. Um, and oh, and there was more money too. There was a, over a million dollars and something else mm -hmm. that you mentioned. And so I guess my question there is, um, you know, who pays it uh, and who gets it? Uh, it's not OHA, I guess, and I don't know of any other Native Hawaiian organization that that you could say is a, a legal organization with a, you know, an, an, a sort of a, a legal entity that could actually receive that kind of money. Where does that go, that money? I think it's uh, initially it started with the TMT partners. You know, there's a general money, general fund in there, and I'm sure some of the money is going to be allocated from there to uh for the relationship between the U.S., I mean, with the Hawaiian natives there, with the Hawaiian community. So basically, uh, the community, the native Hawaiians got to form this entity, a group, and they can benefit some, even from tour guides too. I think they're gonna, they're talking about having a native Hawaiian tour guy, tour going up to Mauna Kea, and maybe they might have restaurants up in the summit there, which the native Hawaiians can operate it since it's under the ceded land concept. Uh, 
So, you know, those things, so, you know, they got to still got to come up with some kind of viable plan that the native Hawaiians got to realize that, uh, uh, and one, one voice of concern. And I don't know if OHA's going to play that role or uh, the Royal Order of Kamehameha, or it could be just that they might form a new entity there, or if they're going to have the Mauna Kea uh, Observatory Group man manage that, or the UH going to manage it, or, you know, they still got to form a, a viable uh, entity for that and move on. Yeah. So uh, uh, how far along are we on this? I guess the university has written it up. It's 80 pages long. We've seen the cover sheet and the summary and the table of contents, but uh, has the Native Hawaiian community seen that? Have the leaders of the, of the Mauna Kea protest, uh, have they seen it? Have they agreed to it? Has there been a vote among those who consider themselves constituents? So uh, where are we? Uh, I believe uh, what I heard from uh, the uh, is that the, the attorneys from the opposition group, with the Hawaiian uh, protesters, they kind of saw it and they reject, the leaders kind of reject and they still want to uh, not have the TMT construction go in there. So, you know, that kind of stands right now. But I don't know now with the movement, uh, that's what I brought this uh uh, issue about having it registered on the UNESCO's World Culture Heritage Site, maybe with that, plus all those benefits they're going to get, they can realize that all that protest the Native Hawaiians did wasn't in vain, that they can proceed. It did work for their uh, recognition, and they got their respect, and uh, they can move on now and uh, go from there. And have well, In the mechanical it, sense, you know, have, have the attorneys for the protest group, have they responded, um, you know, to the provisions of this 80 page document, which can't be more than a few weeks old, uh, maybe less mm -hmm. and have they responded and said this part we agree, this part we don't agree, uh, you know, you haven't satisfied us on this thing, um, which I have satisfied us on that. Um, has that happened? Is there, is there uh, what do you call an engagement between the, the two sides of this? Or, uh, and, I, and I take it there's a substantial possibility that the Native Hawaiian group says, no, no, we don't want to tell, you don't understand, we don't want TMT there at all. And there's mm -hmm. nothing you can do in, in money or cultural you know, uh, development uh, that will mm -hmm. change our mind. We don't want it there, period. Because I, mm -hmm. I hear that from what you're saying. Um, mm -hmm. So w which way is it going? I think if you look at the, from the rule of law side, because uh, we know the Native Hawaiian issue is very sensitive and we've been given so much leniency uh, even our governor Ige has given that leniency. They don't want to arrest them. They want to give them some cooling off period. And the Supreme Court, uh, Hawaii Supreme Court, has approved and said that uh, long as the Mauna Kea uh, partners come up with a vital construction permit to develop the TMT, they can proceed. And they already had come up with a viable construction plan. So they that was some time ago. Eagerly. Yes, that was like six months ago. So that's when they started the protest back then. And they had all these celebrities come out there, like Johnson, uh, du uh, Dwayne Johnson of The Rock, and uh, they had uh, Jason Moa from Aquaman there, and you know all these other movements from. Uh, uh, I remember, uh, uh, that was, uh, and that was a movement of the rising of the Aina and uh, Imua, uh, Mauna Kea yeah. Imua, with the Triangle Movement, and uh, they're basically uh, now you know island wide or statewide. Uh, there's a movement with the Native Hawaiians, especially for the young people. Well, you, but uh, you talk about rule of law, you know, we have, I think the country has some problems about rule of law. We don't seem to accept rule of law. In this case, the uh, TMT um, developers, the consortium, um, put in like almost 15 years of effort to go through every, dot every I and cross every T to get their permit. And uh, there were, you know, a couple of Supreme Court cases about it, and they finally, finally got their permit. But even after they got their permit, and even after they tried to uh, start construction here, um, the Native Hawaiian community still opposed it, ignoring the rule of law, ignoring the permit, uh, on the basis of their cultural argument, which they had made in the course of that, that uh, litigation, um, and which they failed at in that litigation. But they didn't care mm -hmm. about uh, the litigation. They didn't care about what the Supreme Court said. Uh, they just want to stop the telescope. And mm -hmm. so my question to you is, um, you know, uh, who is doing the rule of law now when we are talking about documents that are that are being exchanged, calling for millions of dollars to be paid 
uh, to achieve the rule of law, even when the rule of law should be achievable and enforceable right now without paying a penny. After all, the consortium has paid millions in order to get to where we are. So why should I have to pay, why should they have to pay millions of dollars to enforce the rule of law when they already have the rule of law, um, you know, uh, to allow the telescope to proceed? And who is in charge here anyway? Oh, you got a good point, Jay. That's why we're having this discussion here today. And uh, hopefully we can come up with a, a message that we can send and hopefully that uh, the leaders can uh, decide what to do. I know in terms of rule of law, it's pretty much black and white. And, uh, and in, in Hawaii's case, we're showing a lot of leniency because we're sensitive people here. We understand what the native Hawaiian went through and what their culture the, since the overthrow of monarchy and they were really treated really badly, like second citizens. Uh, so, you know, those kind of things are coming up and now the native Hawaiians are more educated and they realize the, uh, what their ancestors went through. So this is like their form of protest and they wanna show that uh, there's a unity among the native Hawaiians in Hawaii. Yeah, I, I certainly agree that there's a, you know, there's a threat of sovereignty and historical protest back from the overthrow. In, in all of this. And, and the, the question I asked you before we began the show, I think, is still dwells on my mind. Let's assume that somehow this agreement is negotiated to the satisfaction of the Native Hawaiian community. And somehow there's enough money being paid, enough cultural you know, development being undertaken um, by TMT or by the state or a combination, maybe the county also, that will satisfy them on the TMT. But that doesn't solve uh, the concern of the Native Hawaiian community about the overthrow, about sovereignty, about uh, you know the, uh, their argument that the land was taken from them. Um, mm -hmm. So if we do that, if we pay that price, I say we, I mean the state and TMT, if we pay that price, what assurance is there that we won't have exactly the same, same kind of protest again later, the day after, um, either on uh, wind turbines here or there, uh, on any, any development, uh, you know, project anywhere in the mm -hmm. state, uh, Sherwood Forest, for example. Um, yeah. So, so what, what assurance is there that we won't have this same kind of experience resulting in, you know, additional cost to somebody over and over again? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Jay. Uh, you know, it's a very sensitive feature being a, a local or not being a local. And uh, that's a local issue. And I see it with the uh, happened in the past January at Kalahavi when Bumpy Kalaheli, Melanie Trash was protesting. And maybe with the young generation now, this is the mean of their protest and uh, what you see. And uh, that's kind of stuff I kind of oversee. Is that, and it's a, uh, it might happen again in the next generation after this, you know, but we just got to make things pono right now so the next generation can realize and they can make a better decision to move on what's good for the state of Hawaii as a whole. Yeah, okay, hope so. Uh, I hope the cooler heads will prevail. Uh, but let me ask you, uh, you know, from a, you know, an, a, a, an expectancy point of view, a prediction point of view, here we are, we're pretty close to February 26th. The two months has effectively gone by. Uh, somebody took the trouble to uh, write and conceive of, uh, you know, a, um, uh, a huge deal, a huge deal in money anyway, uh, to the Native Hawaiian community to uh, get their buy-in on the TMT. Um, but as you said, they, they haven't really agreed to that and they may not agree to that because they don't want it there. And so we're gonna come up to the, my, my guess is we're gonna come up to uh, February 26th without a resolution of this matter, period. Uh, lots of argument, but no resolution. What mm -hmm. will happen after that? Can you give me your expectation, your prediction? No, I think my prediction is maybe nothing might not happen. Just just move on and see what happens with the House and the Senate's concurrent resolution that they're pushing for the uh, between the Native Hawaiian past, present, and future, and see if they can uh, mitigate, send some kind of message. Uh, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to uh, uh, not reinvent the wheel, but I just want to come up with a viable solution, a pono. So that's what I brought this up about the UNESCO's cultural heritage uh, uh, that we've been working on it for the past uh, four or five years and uh, making Mauna Kea Mountain 
in conjunction with TMT telescope as a World Cultural Heritage Site. But there's a catch-22 to this. So I know that there's a, a provision in the UNESCO saying that if it does get World Cultural Heritage, there won't be any future construction. Uh, so unless you get some kind of waiver. Uh, but so in other words, we want the TMT to proceed first then we can apply for the uh, Mauna Kea as a uh, UNESCO's world. Yeah, so they get that right. So if you have the UNESCO designation, um, in exchange for that, UNESCO wants to have control over any future construction, right? Well, they got to work with the entity, the Hawaii uh, Mauna Kea Observatory uh, uh, Committee and the TMT International Partners and see if they can come up with a, a, a provision in there to maybe have an expansion for other means as well and go from there. Okay, Russell, we're almost out of time. I want to thank you for coming on to discuss this and for your efforts behind the scenes and trying to resolve and get people to come together. And let me say that whatever your age is, whatever my age is, I think we're going to get much older, the two of us, um, before this is resolved. And I hope you can keep coming on and we can catch it, you know, and uh, update our uh, update our view of it uh, going forward. Thank you so much, Russell. It's nice to see you again. We look forward to seeing you next time. Aloha. Yeah, thank you, Jay. And uh, thank you very much. I'll see you around again. Aloha.